Hello everyone. It's good to have you with us. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, right away we're going to look in the Word of God in the first book of the New Testament, Matthew's Gospel and chapter 2. And we're going to read a couple of verses which will be well known to many of you, I'm sure. And this is what we read from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2 and verse 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. It's interesting that these men came from the east. We know that. But it's also widely thought that these magi, these wise men, came from the area of Babylon. Now, we, keeping in mind, of course, that when you look in the Old Testament, in the prophecy of Daniel, Daniel himself, as a young, a young boy, a young man, was taken into captivity from Israel. The Israelites were taken into captivity there to Babylon. And Daniel lived most of his life in Babylon and was very influential and key uh, in that kingdom. And the Lord had uh, elevated him so. And if Daniel had a, a tremendous influence upon the kingdom of Babylon. He was there as God's man at God's time. So the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, they would have become known and available Obviously, amongst the, the Israelites themselves, became known as the Jews later, and they would have had access and to know the first five books of the Bible. And so, it's not, it's not by mistake that the wise men, when they say, we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And we say, well, how would they know about this? Well, the fourth book of the Old Testament is the book of Numbers. And we read in verse 17 of Numbers chapter 24, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel. The word scepter there symbolizes authority. A place of authority, legal authority. And so the wise men would have come across this particular scripture, which prophesies a star shall come out of Jacob, a scepter shall rise out of Israel. And the wise men saw that, and it was literal, a star shall arise. And so what did they say in verse 2 of our reading? They came asking, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? Because we have seen his star in the east. Notice this. We have seen his star. A, a lot of speculation, a lot of theories have been put forward about this star. Some have said, oh, it must have been a comet. Others have said it was a conjunction of planets aligning up to make this, and all those other things. But you know, those are things we can just make conjecture about. The fact is, what does the Bible say? They say, we have seen his star. Not just a star, but his star. Personally, I believe it was something which was supernatural for that time, for that moment, that God used. It was his star. It was nobody else's star. It was his. They said, the wise men declared, we have seen his star. Referring back to Numbers chapter 24, verse 17. That must have been exciting for them. We have seen his star. The question can be asked, well, how? Did they see his star? Think of that. How did they see his star? By its light, but also by its position. Remember this. The wise man had been looking in the right place at the right time. We have seen his star, and we've come to worship him. His star. Remember this, friend. With God's eternal Son, Jesus Christ, it's all about light. It's all about light. 
Think of this. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, the words of Jesus were this. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to, to you these things in the churches. And then Jesus says this. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Jesus was saying, I am the bright and morning star. And that beautifully fits in with Numbers 24 and 17. When he said, a star shall come out of Jacob. Jacob, whose name was turned to Israel, changed to Israel. And Jesus said, I'm of the offspring of David. He came from Israel, the bright and morning star. And Jesus is the descendant, the seed of King David, the one that was prophesied many years before. I see him now, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel. Speaking of authority, Jesus declared, I am the bright and morning star. Let's look at this wonderful thought today, friends. We Again, in the Old Testament, the prophecy of Isaiah this time, in chapter 60, towards the end of that prophecy, from verse 1 we read these words, and it's to Israel. Arise, shine, because your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. For the, but the Lord will rise over you, and His glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your coming. And so it was prophesied, saying to Israel, your light has come, referring to the one who would be born in there, in Israel, in Judea, would be the Messiah, the Son of God. Your light has come. Your light but it was also to do with a particular individual, a person. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Notice this. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. Under Rome, it was a dark time. A very dark time. In fact, under Caesar Augustus, this was the first time the whole world was under the Caesar. He was the first first emperor of Rome itself. And there was there was a so-called peace. There was a tentative peace. But the world was in darkness. It was in fear and in trepidation under the Roman Empire at this time. But the word of God prophesied this. The darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will rise over you. His glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your coming. And of course, not only, not only is it referring to Christ's first coming, but also to his second coming. Because there's coming a time, friends, when, not, when the Gentiles shall come to Jesus Christ, when he reigns upon earth, and the kings and the leaders of this world will pay him homage because he will be king of kings and lord of lords. But also, thank God that Jesus Christ came he came as the bright and morning star. And people will come to his light. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, we read, Peter writes with the believers, We also have the prophetic word made sure, made certain, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns, and the morning star rises in your hearts. It's all there about light. It's all about the Savior in our lives, my friends. When Jesus came the first time, when the Son of God came in His first coming, we read that in Luke chapter 2, that it was the time that Mary and Joseph were to take the baby Jesus, to take Him to the temple in Jerusalem, and to make an offering for him. Probably two little turtle doves or two pigeons which was known as that was the, the least you could give. It was for the poor. And they would give that. And they had to do this because according to the law, the law stated that every male that opens the womb is holy to the Lord. And so they came to offer their son, their baby son, Jesus, Yeshua to the Lord. 
And they did that. And the Bible tells us of a man called Simeon. And the word of God states that it had been revealed to Simeon that he would not see death until he had seen the Christ. Until he had seen with his own eyes the Christ, the Messiah, the chosen one of God. It had been revealed to him. And so, the Bible shows to us that he was brought to the temple that day. And the day that Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus walked in, Simeon was waiting there for them. And the Bible tells us, uh, from Luke 2, verse 30, the Bible says he took the baby up in his arms, and he said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, according to what you've said. Because my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. It's all about light, friends. You see, the world at that time was in darkness. Spiritually, it was complete darkness. But you know, thank God, the wonderful, wonderful thing is this, when the fullness of the time has come, as Galatians 4 and 4 says, God sent forth His Son. God sent forth His Son because it was a time of darkness. But thank God, that was the time that God sent His Son, the light of the world. He sent His Son, the bright and morning star, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles. John the Baptist's father, Zacharias, we read off in Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, and after, after the, he'd written down and said, his name shall be called John. And so no one in your family is called John. He called for something to write and said, his name shall be called John. And they were all amazed. And the Bible says that Zacharias' mouth, his tongue was loosed. And suddenly he could speak again because he'd been uh, made, and he could not speak because of his, his lack of faith. And so his tongue was loosed. He was able to speak again. And he began to prophesy. And in that part of the prophecy towards the end, in verses 78 and 79, Zacharias declared, Through the tender mercy of our God, which, uh, with which the day spring from on high has visited us. It's unusual. Through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us. The day spring. Literally in the Greek, it is the dawn. The day spring, the dawn. And this is a name, a special name given to the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one of God, the chosen one. And so Zacharias prophesied, it's through the tender mercy of our God that the Messiah, the day spring from on high, has visited us. And Zacharias was speaking ahead prophetically. His son, was going to use use mightily of God, but he went further than that in prophecy and spoke of the coming Messiah and spoke of the Messiah has visited us as if it's already happened. Wonderful, because it's speaking of light. Day spring, the dawn from on high has visited us. Jesus said, I am the bright and morning star. In John's Gospel, chapter 8, Jesus spoke to the people again, saying, I am the light of the world. The one who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. What a perfect person to send was God's eternal Son, who is the bright and morning star. And he said, the person who follows me will not walk in darkness. If you follow the world, you'll walk in darkness. But if you follow me, you will not walk in darkness, but you will have the light of life. And that's why Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 9, verse 5, and said to his disciples, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. He said, while I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. But Jesus didn't stop there. Because he'd already said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, he said to them, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. What does this mean? 
those who put their trust in Jesus, those who are followers of Christ, you're going to be the light of the world. And how can we be the light of the world? Jesus is not here. He's in heaven. How can we be the light of the world? We are to be reflections of his light. We're to shine forth the Lord from our lives that people will see Christ in us, the hope of glory. So we're to be reflections of his light. And his light is in everyone who is a child of God. Everyone who puts their trust in Jesus. And that's why Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 16, let your light so shine before people that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. That's how we're to let our light shine, friends. How? Be like Jesus. Live like Jesus. Talk like Jesus. The people will be attracted to the Jesus in us. Let's be honest. If we were simply as Christian believers were to keep constantly projecting ourselves. Listen, friends, the world will not be attracted to us. They'll say, you're no different to anybody else. But if they see Christ in us, they'll be attracted to the Christ in us. And all the glory goes to Jesus. Listen to what the Bible says in John's Gospel, chapter 1. And it says from verse 4, speaking of the Word, another name, description of Jesus. It says that in Him, in the Word, in Jesus was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. The darkness did not apprehend it. What it means there is that darkness couldn't fully understand light. Also, it means in the Greek too, that darkness could not withhold light. And could not withstand and say, no, stay back there. Darkness can't do that. It's been said that no matter how dark it is, just the smallest light dispels darkness. And darkness cannot come and overwhelm light. It's the other way around. Light always overwhelms darkness. That's why Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Because no darkness can overwhelm Jesus Christ. No darkness can overwhelm the light of his gospel and the light of his life. And it goes on to say in John chapter 1, there was a man sent from God, his name was John. We know as John the Baptist. It says, this man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light. Speaking of Jesus. Notice that Jesus is known here as the light. That all through him, through Jesus, might believe. All through him might believe. But then it goes on to say about John, it says, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That, speaking of Jesus again, that was the true light which gives light to everyone who comes into the world. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that everybody's born automatically of the light of God. No, what it means is that no matter who we are, no matter what country, nation, race, no matter if we're rich or poor, if we've been born into this world, and we have been, says we have the opportunity to know the light of God. We have the opportunity to know the light of Jesus Christ, God's Son. And that is able to light every one of us if we are willing to accept it. The bright and morning star. We have seen His star. 2 Corinthians 4 and 6. The Bible states, it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. So the Apostle Paul is making something very clear here. He's setting the foundation saying, listen, it's the same God. The one back in Genesis chapter 1 as we know it. It's the same God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts. It's the same God. There's only one true God who has shone in our hearts, Paul's writing to Christian believers, who shone in our hearts, why? To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God wants to shine the glory of His Son into our lives. How? 
through Jesus. There's no other way, friends. There is no other way, and it's because it's the light of the knowledge. Knowing that God sent Jesus, He is the only Savior of mankind. He's the only one through whom we can go to God. And He, if we can have that, the light of the knowledge, once we know that, we can know the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. How? It's all in the face of Jesus Christ. It's all in Him. All the glory is found in Jesus Christ. We have seen His star. How do they see it? By its light and its position. How do we see Jesus? By His light and His position, knowing that He is King of kings and Lord of lords. He's the eternal Son of God. And our eyes are focused upon Him. Revelation 1 and 16. John describes this tremendous revelation, the first chapter, verse 16, and says this of Jesus. His countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. Friends, that's the light of Jesus right there. Jesus does not have just light and just illuminating him. No, it does not illuminate him. In fact, when you go to Hebrews chapter 1, it speaks about his effulgent glory. Oh, and in the Greek, what it means there, it means that the glory that's there, the light that's there, it comes from within him. It's not from outside to illuminate him. It comes from within the eternal Son of God because he is light. He is eternal, perfect, pure light because he is God. He is divine. And so it shines out from him. The glory of his light shines out from him, friends. And his countenance, just his countenance, is like the sun shining in its strength. And that's why Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4 and 6, it's all in the face of Jesus Christ. His countenance, it's like the sun shining in its strength. You have seen his star. Jesus came into the world. Because the world lay in darkness, friends. And God loved you and I so much, he sent his son. He realized that the world lying in darkness could not do anything for anyone. It could not save one person from this terrible darkness. Spiritually speaking, everyone was lost. He did not know him. So he sent his son. He sent his Messiah, his day spring, his dawn into the world. Let me tell you, friend, it's important to realize this. The future of this world it's still darkness. And even more so as time goes on. That's one side, but here's the other side which is wonderful. But the future of the church of Jesus Christ is bright. Do you know why? Because our eyes are upon Jesus, my friends. Our eyes are upon the Lord. Because we need to have to notice where the light's coming from, spiritually speaking. And we know to find it the right position, don't look anywhere else, friends. Look at him. It's his star. Look at Jesus. He's the bright and the morning star. And the future of the Christian believer, the follower of Jesus Christ, it's bright because we're looking to him. Our future is Jesus Christ himself. Listen to what it says in Proverbs 4.19. The path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter under the perfect day. Every day, child of God, that you live, it's one step closer to being with Jesus. And every single day, don't look at the things that are going around you at the world at this time. With all that's happening, with the COVID, and all that's happening with the pandemic, don't get drawn into that, my friend. And don't get into all the theories and all the arguments and conspiracy. Friends, don't let the enemy suck you into that. Keep your eyes upon his star. Keep your eyes upon the bright and morning star. Because let me tell you, friends, when you see his countenance and when you see the light shining from him and his glory, everything else pales into oblivion, my friend. Because he is all that matters. It's all in his time. And friends, remember the word history. At the end of the day, history is his story. It's all about Jesus, my friend. The path of the just is like the shining sun. Notice this that shines ever brighter to the perfect day. Your child of God today, my friend, listen carefully. Every day, not only is it one day closer to being with Jesus, but every day is a little bit brighter every day. 
it's getting brighter and brighter and brighter until either God calls us home to be with him or we're caught up to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord and we shall receive the same glory as Jesus has. Friends, we're going to be bright. It's going to be bright and unbelievable. But we will believe it because it will happen and we are going to bask in the sunshine and the glory of our Savior Jesus Christ. That's why the writer Hebrews says in chapter 12, verse 2, and encourages the believers and says, looking unto Jesus. There's where you keep your eyes, my friends. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Or as another translation says, fixing your eyes, fixing our eyes upon Jesus, the originator and the perfecter of our faith. The only, the only time that our faith will be perfect is when we stand before him in perfect likeness like him. Friends, we have seen a star. They were wise men. They were wise men. We took all that time. It wasn't a 24-hour visit. The moment they saw his star, they knew it. They knew the scripture, the, the prophecy was being fulfilled. We've seen a star. They took it. As from the Lord. Notice that. They didn't question it. They didn't argue about it. They took it as from the Lord. And they had faith to believe it. And said, now we're going to go. Because the scripture says so. Stars shall come out of Jacob. And so they went. And they reckon it would have taken at least 18 months to two years to get there. Because remember this. At all the preparation time. All to get ready. How to, to get together. To get the particular gifts that they were taking. And also to make that journey. Friends, they did it because it was all in the timing of the Lord. And it's all because they saw his star. They saw his star. They saw it. And they believed it. They believed the word of God. And they came because of its light and its position. Friend, today, child of God, I trust you're encouraged today. Keep your eyes focused on the Lord, upon Jesus. Because, friends, that's the most important place to keep our focus. The things that are happening today, this time tomorrow, it'll be old news. But every day for you is getting brighter. Don't be, let yourself be, as it were, be cast down on what's around you. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Every child, every believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, every child of God, has this wonderful hope. The best is yet to come. For the child of God, it's just going to keep getting better and better and better. But what about what's happening in the world? Friends, don't worry about the world. The world will take care and the Lord's going to take care of the world. You keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your focus upon the Lord. Let the light of his glory shine in your life. And then you'll know Jesus, he is the bright and morning star. He will never lead you in darkness. He will always lead you with light. Remember that with Jesus is always light. If you've joined us today, friend, you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can. That's the good news. That's what the word gospel means. It's good news. You can put your trust in Jesus today. You may say, well, I'm not religious. That's a, that's a bonus. That's a good thing you're not religious. God's not looking for religious people. If he was, he wouldn't have sent Jesus into the world because the world was already full of religion. But why did God send his son Jesus into the world? Because religion cannot save one single soul. It simply condemns souls to a lost eternity. But the good news, God loves you so much, friend. He wants to save you from a lost eternity. And friend, so turn from the darkness and turn to the light. It's Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ, God's son. And I trust you'll do that. Simply call upon and say, Lord Jesus, you died on the cross for me. Thank you for taking my place. Thank you for bearing my sins upon the cross and taking the punishment for my sins. And Lord, right now I ask for your forgiveness. And Lord, I receive your forgiveness for my sins right now. And also, I receive your gift of eternal life. And friend, if that's what you do, and that's what praying is. Praying is simply talking to the Lord as I'm talking to you right now. And I'm asking you, if you've never done that, right now, talk to the Lord. Well, he'll hear you as soon as you start speaking. If you're genuine, the Lord will hear you immediately. 
Talk to him. Speak to him. And when you call upon him to save you, he will save you. And he will take away all your sins. And you become instantly a child of God. His light will flood your soul. And he'll come and by his Holy Spirit, he will come and live inside you. And you'll be changed from the inside out. Will you do that today? I trust you will. Let me pray with you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, I ask you, Lord, that you will bless every hearer of this message today by the way of video camera. I pray that, Lord, for your people, those that have put their trust in you, those that already follow you, that you'll bless them and strengthen them and encourage them, build them up. Yes, Lord, and, and also impel them into living more for you in the light of the days in which we're living. And I pray that, Lord, they may realize again the best is yet to come. And that, Lord, you've never left us. You've never forsaken us. Lord, you still love us as much as the first day you saved us. You love us with an everlasting love. Lord, for those right now who have either prayed and called upon you to save them or thinking about it right now, I ask, Lord, I trust that they will do that and they will yet call upon you that you'll save them from their sins. And they will do that. So, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, that you are still the same and you do not change. You're still willing to save people from their sins, those who call upon you. And may your light enter them as they reach out to you by faith. May your light shine into their lives and expel the darkness. And all these things we ask today in Jesus' name. Amen. It's good to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us. And I trust you'll, you'll join with us the next time as well. God bless you and have a wonderful week.